So Dion Beebe, you reunited with uh, Rob Marshall for another big, uh, ambitious movie musical, Mary Poppins Returns. Uh, this one is uh, a little different, though, in that it's a uh, highly anticipated sequel to a bit of a classic movie. Um, mm -hmm. Did you feel any pressure living up to the original? Um, look, I think we went into it with a lot of apprehension. Uh, we felt all of that pressure. Um, you know, it's such an iconic um, movie, and I think it it has such a place in in so many hearts and minds, and you know, childhoods, and uh, and that whole sort of you know, fifty four year um, lead up. Uh, I, I think it sort of um, yeah, I think we definitely approached with with a, a an amount of sort of uh, apprehension and and terror, um, but you know it it's it was just this sort of opportunity. I think both Rob and I saw you know where you, we were sort of going to embark on a movie that is completely devoid of cynicism. You know, you know it's like you don't get that opportunity very often. I mean, I think even comedy is cynical. You know, it it it's just this sort of um, you know, it, it's the world we're in. I think in order to survive, we become cynical, you know. So to have this sort of character who is, you know, certainly has, you know, is feisty and and, and opinionated and, um, but, you know, is also just sort of joyful and, um, you know, and, and, and with, it does everything ultimately with, with good intention, you know. Um, so, Look, there was a, a lot of reasons that I, I think we we were excited about tackling this, and um, uh, certainly, uh, you know, to to try and bring this story into you know into this sort of you know decade, into this you know so many decades later, you know, was was a big part, and and and. And I think, you know, in, certainly in our conversations when, when Rob and I started, it was, well, how do we, how do we reconcile, you know, that iconic original with, with a modern, you know, essentially a, a modern day version. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, talk, talk a little, little bit about, about uh, just, just how you did that. that. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, look, we, we certainly, we were both, obviously aware of the style of the original and and when you look at the original film it's you know stylistically i mean it, it broke a lot of ground um when it was released in terms of just the techniques and uh, that they utilized um but the look i mean the look of it though is is also very um it's very stylized as well you know the it, it's very sort of lit it's very bright um the sets are not necessarily you know, they were not trying to create reality. Um, they, they, they were in a sort of, as much as, you know, they, they, they con contrasted these two worlds, that even their reality was sort of heavily stylized, you know. So I think when we set about this, it was, you know, we wanted a, a, a reality, a, a different sort of base in terms of where we, where we were to sort of launch from. And... Um, and, and you know, in defining sort of London in that that sort of depression era London, I think you know we looked for, uh, you know, a palette, a sort of a sense of reality um, that that you know gave us a different launching point into our sort of heavily sort of fantas fantasy sequences, um, and um, and also you know our transitions were sort of. Different, you know, we we transitioned often directly into fantasy, and and often we sort of we ramped up slowly into the in, into the big numbers, you know, sort of like you know, for example, Trip the Light, fantastic, which is a number that sort of really sort of segues quite sort of slowly through the streets of London and finally into a sort of um, you know the sort of strange underground, above ground you know, park. Um, but, you know, we, we, we knew we needed to bring, you know, new technology to, to the story in terms of how we were, were telling it. But at the same time, as Rob often described it, you know, he wanted to keep one foot in the original. Um, and, and I think there's a couple of moments certainly where we sort of, you know, tip our hat to that and, 
and and most notably probably the the big animation you know the big animation sequence uh, hand drawn animation sequence which you know I, you know I certainly have imagined I would you know in all the sort of visual effects on that I sort of work in today I I never imagined I would be you know working with you know hand drawn animators on set yeah that was that was a real thrill. Well, talk a little bit more about how you were able to do that. Yeah, you know, it, it, it was, um, you know, it was a matter of, um, you know, first working out, you know, with Rob working out the sort of choreography of, of the sequence of events that, that, he, that he wanted. Um, and, and so it was sort of fairly meticulously worked out um, in terms of the, you know, the, in, in a way, our animation sequence takes place over three sort of portions of the story. Um, the first, we sort of come into the the ball, um, and then in the big um, the big dance hall number, and then our sort of our sort of ride, our sort of um, you know ride through the woods in the cart. Um, and and it was a matter of working with the animators um, on set. Uh, a lot, um, and and for us to you know through a process of rehearsal and um, you know working with the actors. Sorry, about the, you're fine. Don't worry. It happens sometimes. <laughs> anyway, um, you know of of working through the action and then being on set with the animators, which was really a thrill. And they would um, you know they would sketch ideas you know by hand. Um, about sort of characters, and we would talk about action, um, and then you know we we basically filmed. We did a sort of um, you know our previs was was actually filming our actors through these sequences. So we used you know props, we used boxes, we used things to to simulate the you know all the different um, you know all the different um, you know actions that they would have to go through and. And we filmed it. That stuff was cut together um, with our editor Wyatt, and then the animators um, took that footage and started to essentially hand draw, you know, sequences within that sort of cut rehearsal footage. Um, from there, the characters were sort of developed a little further. We went back. We would shoot another little sequence, you know, a little piece that they would then take. So we really created a, a pretty detailed blueprint of um, of the sequence before we started shooting, um, and we couldn't effectively really, you know, pre-visit in 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 the sort of computer animation way as we do sort of traditionally with with movies now, because of the sort of this hand-drawn sort of application. So this sort of gave us a, a blueprint that you know allowed us to shoot. And because we have to, it's such a long lead time for the sort of this sort of style of animation. Um, this was the first sequence we shot in a movie, um, in order to to give them the lead time to take that footage and um, and shoot it. But you know what was interesting is the is the dance hall, the big sort of song and dance thing they do together, Lynn Manuel and uh, Emily. You know, we pretty much when we shot that treated it like a like a musical number where we um you know we rehearsed it we staged it i lit it like a musical number so it's all all the cues are built in um we you know i use sort of um you know theatrical lighting elements and cues in order really to that um that that work within that sequence so it was a way of sort of um integrating the you know, for the animators to then take our lighting cues and build them into the animation, so to create that sort of seamless um, connection. Right. You've done four musicals with Rob Marshall before, um, and uh, each one is a little different in in its own unique way. I mean, uh, you know, Chicago is is much more about the dance, and yeah. you know, um, you know, this one is a little bit more about like fantasy and things like that. I mean, is there a the technique to how you approach each musical individually. Um, yeah, look, it, um, it, it it's always going to depend on on the sort of subject and 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 on what what we're trying to sort of achieve within the sort of um, different stories. I mean, this one really, 
in a way sort of brought together um, almost all of our skill set. You know, um, for for Poppins, we you know we had we had the big stage number in in Trip the Light. We also had the sort of you know the the sort of more fantasy sequence musicals. Um, but it also it was for Rob and I it was our first um, original musical together um, because all the others were sort of Broadway um, you know Broadway musicals that we were adapting, and this one was a chance to you know really to build it from the ground up and um, which I think sort of you know made it that much of a sort of more of a challenge you know to to really start from scratch with with a new soundtrack and a whole new template um, and um, you know we um, you know we I, I think we sort of because over all this time you know we really have sort of Rob and I have developed a, you know a sort of a, a shorthand that we we work with. Um, um, you know, we, we were able to, you know, you know, find find a language for for, for this uh, project, and, um, and 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 yes, as I said, I think we had to bring everything we'd we'd le learned together to this one because it was such a enormous sort of technical challenge uh, to 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 get there. Uh, you won an Oscar for your work on Memoirs of a Geisha, another Rob Marshall movie, not a musical. Um, <laughs> you were also nominated for Chicago. Um, can you just talk a bit about, you know, winning the Oscar and, and what that recognition meant for you? Uh, look, it, it was, you know, an incredible, you know, an incredible thrill. I don't think I, I truly really understood w what it meant, and particularly when, when we were nominated for Chicago and when Chicago won Best Picture. Um, you know, I hadn't been in the U.S. that long, and I thought, you know, you know, I, I don't think I really understood the just the sort of um, the sort of emphasis that is put on the, the sort of awards process and 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 what it meant to sort of be nominated like that by your peers. So it, I sort of very naively sort of went through you know the, that whole Chicago experience, um, and then with um, you know, with uh, Memos of a Geisha, you know, I think that was, I, I was a little more like, okay, well, this is, this is sort of um, the, this is the Oscars, this is what it means to sort of be a part of the Oscars. Um, and, and look, there's, it's very hard to sort of describe that process of, of having to walk up on the stage when, when your name is called. It's, it's a little bit, uh, it's very, very weird. And um, I think, for me, the, the, the weirdest moment was, I mean, the walk takes forever, but I think the weirdest moment was when you finally get up there and turn around and, and look out into the audience. And, you know, there's all, you know, there's all the sort of, all the people who you've admired, you know, throughout your career sort of sitting, you know, staring at you, waiting for you to say something sort of interesting or funny or meaningful. Um, it's uh yeah it's uh, it's sort of pretty daunting but um yeah all i can mostly what i remember is the countdown clock you know i think it was already on it was already on 11 seconds when when i started and then i sort of blew the whole speech because i ended up saying something about my mother who was somewhere up there meaning up there in the upper levels of the everyone thought she died and so <laughs> then i have to go into the press room and explain no she's not actually dead and, uh, I actually got a reporter in the paper the next day that my mother, I dedicated my speech to my poor dead mother. Um, so then when my mother went back to Australia, it was like, you know, we called it the sort of resurrection tour. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, you really don't really know what to say when you're up there. It's, it's, a, it's a very sort of, uh, it's a very overwhelming experience. Yeah. Well, Dion, thank you so much. And uh, congratulations on your work. Uh, I know this movie has a, a lot of, Big fans. Uh, I'm an admirer of it as well. Uh, so thank you very much and uh, congratulations. Uh, thank you so much, Zach, and uh, appreciate it. Of course. Have a good one.